I see there are 18 little uh, pairs of eyes online already and many more of you will come on as our morning progresses. So we are overcomers. It doesn't matter what we have gone through or what we are going through. We are on the winning side for God is for us and not against us. And there are more with us than those that are against us. Remember that. In a time of trial, we become critical with ourselves. This morning, I want you to put your feet up in this space and let Jesus love on you. Don't use this time to feel measured. Use this time to feel encouraged, built up and lifted up in this space. This space has got nothing to do with likes, it's got nothing to do with building a, a YouTube or a Facebook presence. This is your space, your space. We have many people that come online that will not type up a comment and they will not make themselves known for they are looking for a place of safety. And I want you to know that I will preach the Bible and the truth of God's word with no judgment, no judgment for the Lord Jesus Christ is your father and your friend and he processes where you're at and loves on you. Let's open by praying this morning because that's going to open our hearts to receive the love of the father. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you that your love builds us up and does not break us down. We thank you for this Friday morning, which is the place of Shabbat Shalom, where we enter into rest and we let go of our own labors and we come to that place of adoration, of gratitude and of your presence. We thank you that you measure us, but not for condemnation. You measure us for increase. Every time you come, you say, you need more Holy Spirit. And then you pour out more upon us. You strengthen us in the place of weakness. You call us to come and rest with you. We thank you for the Song of Solomon. Come away with me, my darling, my love. Let me put my right hand under your head and feed you with apples and raisin cakes. Strengthen your heart that you will become lovesick as my bride. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Isn't that awesome to know? Isn't that awesome to know that Papa Daddy he loves us and he invites us into that secret place when we go into the secret place we don't go in there to negotiate we don't go there to evaluate our gifting and our calling we don't go there to renew our vision when we come in to the secret place of God it is the place of fellowship with him. Imagine uh, letting your mom or your dad know you're coming to spend uh, the morning with them and you'll be arriving at 10 o'clock and you walk in and they say, oh, so glad you come. I have a bone to pick with you, sit down. And then they start to, do you think you'll want to go back and cuddle on their couch? No. Most of us really battle um, with disapproval. And it's not the way to be led. The Bible actually says that we are to train up a child in the way they should go. It doesn't say train up a child what they mustn't do. Train up a child 
so that they know the way that they should go. Show them the path everlasting. Teach them about the love of God. That is from everlasting to everlasting. It's not true that when you are bad, Jesus doesn't love you. But when you are good, then he loves you. That's not true. For the Bible says nothing will separate you from the love of God. Not life, nor de or death, powers, principalities, things of the past, things that are happening right now. His love is consistent and his love is unchanging. So that's where grace comes in. Grace is about his love. He is so gracious. That even when he brings direction or co correction, you walk away feeling built up. He doesn't have five points of why you're not doing well. To heal us and to love on us, he woos us back unto him. And he rewards us as we seek him when things are not feeling good we tend to draw away from christians and away from the lord and our gaping pain we have to then fill it with something else because there is a jesus space inside of you made for fellowship that cannot be filled <laughs> with anything else but we really try so we run from pillar to post we work on changing our self-image but remember this you can clean the cup on the outside but if you look into the cup and you see it's not clean you're not going to drink out of it so come and drink out of his cup running harder, eating less, um, having your nose, nose changed, having Botox, um, um, spending all your time on self-help programs, working yourself into a corner, none of it is grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor that he loves you at every stage that you are at let us not forget that he is building you and me as a story for his glory one of the reasons that we feel so disqualified is because we do the thing that the bible says this is foolish you want to know what foolish is comparing yourself amongst yourselves this is foolish how many followers you have why don't you have a thousand or ten thousand followers should i up my game must i come online more uh why has my my uh my uh what do we call them not followers um yeah your mentors or your business uh, whether you're doing mentoring, life coaching, beauty therapy, all these cre creatives um, things. But it's not as, as uh, popular as you thought it would be. Maybe it's because God is saying it's time to rest a bit. Because he is doing a wonderful deep work in you. And man's measurement is let's go faster and don't get me wrong i spoke yesterday about standing up and leading in your life mm -hmm. and so leading in your life is about get up make your bed remember we said yesterday if you just made your bed you're starting to lead because when we are paralyzed by all the pain and the trouble that's going on around us you don't want to even get out of your bed, let alone make it. And so the first thing we do is 
Get up, make your bed, brush your teeth, put on the kettle, put on your music, hear the Lord, either in worship or in a place of contemplation and silence. And already you're going to say, wow, wow, I have had the enemy sitting on my shoulder telling me all the things I need to work on when Jesus loves me the way that he found me. And he says, do not be in a rush to get out of the place where I found you. Do not be in a rush. Why is that? Because he can use you. He can use you even in the place where he found you. And when the enemy tells you you're not doing well, Remember, his report doesn't count. His report doesn't count because your call and your salvation is eternal. What he wants to offer people is temporary. And so don't take your counsel from that negative place. Silence that voice and go, I'm not going to entertain you. I'm going to love myself today for the word says we must love the lord our god with all our heart all our mind and love others as we love ourselves so what happens is we want to do the right thing and we love on everybody and we fill the diary and we do coffee with them and we minister to them and then we encourage them but we never took time to build that love tank and that love tank is built in his secret place and it's just happens very quickly when you get quiet then jesus starts to speak to you and he speaks beautiful things he says you are my son you are my daughter I love you. I created you for my good pleasure. You are unique. There is no duplicate of who you are. What you carry is so significant. He's not asking you to be successful. He's asking you to be significant in a season of insignificance where nobody is really worried about anything but themselves. And so think about uh, Noah when he built the ark. Think about that. Was Noah one of those very ready, prepared, A-game personalities? I don't think so. <laughs> And um, yesterday I watched a, a friend's live from America. And she was speaking, interviewing a, uh, another lady. And she said straight off, this is my, in fact, it was her sister. She said, this is my sister who is my go-to person in everything. She is my lifeline. And isn't that wonderful? Because Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Friendships are great. Family are great. And then Jesus sticks closer than a brother. And so as she was interviewing her sister, and she, as she introduced her sister, I love this. She says, my sister is a people pleaser. And that causes her to overwork because she's got so much to give. But she gets stroking and her love tank's filled by people's approval. She's a people pleaser. And the second thing she said, she's a vault. You can tell her a secret and that vault is locked and she will never share it with anybody else. So you go, wow, what an amazing person. 
what an amazing person. Before, if I said, oh, that person's a people pleaser, you would see it as a negative. negative. But when her sister started to speak, she said, you so rightly said it, I am a people pleaser. And because I'm a people pleaser, I put everybody else first and I come last. But when you recognize what you are using to stroke yourself, to feel good, doesn't mean, oh, you got to get rid of that. It's part of approval addiction. You say, Lord Jesus, redeem this for your glory. Let me put myself in the middle, Lord, of being pleasing, a people pleaser. I want to be a God pleaser too, Lord. And so let me love myself. You see, it sounds very selfish as a Christian to say, let me please myself. But if we are not able to be filled with forgiveness for ourselves, we judge ourselves very harshly. So I want to say to you today, as you've come into this space, online space, that God is proud of you. That your family and your friends are proud of you. They might not tell you enough. But you have endured many storms. And you were vulnerable enough to even be uh, transparent and say, I'm standing in the place of intimacy. Intimacy means into me, see, O oh Lord. And instead of trying to look the perfect Christian, you've said, here I am, spots, wrinkles, and warts. <laughs> here I am, Lord. I like what Rhonda says. It's not selfish at all to please yourself. I believe that uh, it's to do with boundaries. If we are available to everyone and everything and it drains us. It means that we haven't learned to say no. My husband used to preach on the word no a lot and say, spell it with me, N-O. What does it mean? It means no. And he said, you need to learn to say no because we are not the savior. We are a friend of Jesus. Point people to Jesus. Don't try and be a savior. And they said to Jesus, save yourself. Save yourself. You can take yourself off that cross. You can throw yourself off the mountain. Well, that is true, but it wasn't God's will. Very old friend of ours, of Lionel and mine, he, she's in, the, in heaven a lot of years already, Auntie Joey. She used to always say, only do the will of the Father. We used to try and send her to encourage other missionaries because she was a missionary all her life. And she was a matron of a hospital and then also worked in the mission field, delivering babies in the mountains and outlying areas in Africa. And... Um, we used to say, Auntie Joey, can you pick up this person, you know, pick them up as in pray with them, visit them. And she said, I only do what the Father asks me. If God has not asked me to go to that person, the foot is wrong and it won't work. And that is quite amazing. That is quite amazing. And so in the time of pain, we withdraw from other Christians we withdraw, withdraw from the church and we go and we start filling the place of fellowship with things that only Jesus can fill so we're running at 10 20 30 k's a day 
or throwing our weight into this thing and to that charity. How do I know? Because I've been in that place a number of times. I would always say to my husband, why can't we um, go and start a Christian school in Malawi or Mozambique? At least it's measurable. I know how many children we have. I know the system. I can teach it. We can establish. We'll bring such relief to that nation in education because in Africa, if you fall out of school, uh, in secondary school, that you can't go back into the system. And there's a lot of uneducated children. So, and then I would realize it is my insecurity that wants to pull back and become smaller. Can you understand this? That people think that everybody is working on getting bigger, bigger following, bigger uh, ministry. But there are those that are trying to make it smaller. No, it's not because we want us for and no more. It's because we undervalue what God has put in us. But all of these things have a set time. So the door is shut at the moment and it's wonderful, a wonderful invitation to rest in Papa God. Your first place is to be his laid down lover, to love him above all else. Then out of a place of healing and a place of um, fullness we love that one that significant one um, husband wife a good friend and our family and then beyond our family we love our christian family and these three form a cord that cannot be broken your lifeline to jesus your lifeline with those that have been put around you and your lifeline with your Christian family. Make sure that you have people around you that encourage you that those friendships are not toxic. They go, oh, you'll never be thin. Really, you must look at your family line. They all have those hips. That's toxic. Each one has been cre being created beautiful. And we get to a place, not where we're lazy and we don't put in the time and choose the right food, but we get to, we get to a place when we realize that we need to love this temple. Self-hatred works itself out in punishment. I'm going to punish myself. I'm going to push myself harder. I'm going to work harder. After all, I'm actually lazy and it becomes cruel. And you punish yourself. And you withhold your, yourself from yourself and not caring for yourself. And then you withhold yourself from others. They're not, they're not worthy of your time because you're hurting. But today, let it go. Let it go. Let the fight go. Come away with me, my darling, my love. Come and rest with me. Deep calls to deep at the sound of his waterfall. God was gracious. <laughs> this is going to, I mustn't let this come out wrong now. When my husband went to heaven, it's huge and I miss him. But God is gracious that my love for the pain of the trauma is beginning to move out of the way.
And when I look at his photograph, I love, I miss him. But I get excited now to see his photograph before it was too painful. But I'm having a little laugh about this when I say God was gracious. Because as you get older, you start to do funny things. One of them is I'm very much with my hands. I can stand like this and talk to you and do this. <laughs> the other is that I can pull my mouth funny. If I'm concentrating. And Lionel would watch me and he'd say, Rose, you are doing that thing with your mouth again. <laughs> and I'm a person that cannot handle uh, disapproval. If you said, if I got dressed and I said, what does this look like on me? You go, mm, it's average back into the room. <laughs> and uh, he would say to me, I know what suits you. I promise you. Don't, he always said, don't underdress Rose. Rather be smarter than be sloppy. That's, that doesn't suit you. And so as you get older and your mouth is twitching when you don't know it's twitching and you're fiddling with your nails the whole time and you keep interrupting yourself and you forget what you're doing and, and then Lionel would say, don't do that. Stop doing that. I remember I used to say, oh, I will never eat uh, chicken livers. It's yuck. And he said, that is so ungracious. Do not say that word yuck. Or if I say to him, when you get to the robot, he says, what is a robot is a mechanical thing. It's a traffic light. <laughs> and so some days when I'm pulling my face funny and I catch myself doing it, I go, oh, you are so <laughs> gracious, Lord, <laughs> that uh, I don't have Lionel looking and saying, hey, stop pulling your face like that. You're going to make wrinkles here. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you see, we lived so in each other's space that, and we lived, worked together and lived our life together every single day of our lives from the, when we went into ministry like 35 years before, 40 years before. And um, yeah, that's the way it is. So some people are high A personalities. They walk into the room and they say, come on, this morning we're going to pump. Let's get the music on. They put the music on. They say, Jesus is alive and Jesus will never fail you. He's never failed me yet. This is the good day of the Lord and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of your miracle. This is your red letter day. And that's fine. I have some of those days. Is that my, my, this is part of my personality. I love to make people laugh and be happy. And so I can also, without even knowing it, go into clown mode. But inside, maybe I'm going through a hard time. Because when you're up ministering, you are serving another you put aside those things to be able to serve somebody else. But don't forget to serve this temple, to serve this mind, to serve this spirit that Jesus has given you. I'm going to step away from the camera for a bit. I'm going to go and fetch um, something to drink and some biscuit or bread because we remember we are going to um, we are going to break bread so maybe you want to go and get something it's okay you can use water let's go and prepare ourselves to break bread together, to love on Jesus, and to do this in remembrance of Him.
I'm just going to give you another minute to go and get something to drink and something to eat in the area of breaking bread together. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Rivals, you have no equals, you have the forever God you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, so never take above all names. Powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand again. Powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 what a powerful name. The name of Jesus. It's the name above every name. The beautiful name of Jesus. Jesus, who is the lover of our soul. Come, Lord. No greater name than the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After uh, when Jesus sat at the table, he took the bread and he broke it saying, this is my body broken for you. Take it and eat it. Let us together, we thank you for your body that was broken for us, Lord. And together this morning, we eat of this bread in remembrance of you. Let us eat together. Beautiful name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for going to that cross for us, that we could be whole. I thank you, Lord, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is by the blood of the new covenant. Every covenant, there had to be the shedding of blood. This is the cup of my new covenant. Drink it as a rem in a remembrance of me. We thank you for the cup of your blood. We thank you that you took that curse of sin and death and shame and death could not hold you death cannot hold him let us drink together this morning the cup of fellowship the cup of salvation the cup of everlasting love Nothing stands against the name of Jesus. Nothing we face today stands against the name of Jesus. 
Pour your love out on each one this morning, Lord Jesus. Forgiven, accepted in the beloved. Resting in the complete work of Calvary. Not measured against others. Built up by his everlasting love. You are forgiven. The past is gone. You cannot earn God's favor. You are loved. Sickness bows its knee. Sickness bows its knee. Yes, come Holy Spirit. Right now. At the name of Jesus. Every tongue confesses Jesus Christ is Lord. And sickness bows today. Bow. Sickness bows today in Jesus' name. Come on. At the mighty name of Jesus, sickness bows. Torment bows. Depression goes. Goes. The yoke of oppression goes in Jesus' name. Flees away in Jesus' name. Every torment is broken in the name of Jesus. This is your new day. This is the day of realizing that God has created you in His image. And these things cannot hold you. Even as the grave did not hold Jesus. He was the firstborn from the dead. You are the company of the firstborn. God wants to raise you with eternal life and immortality. Death and destruction flees away. Do not compare yourself with people's systems. Allow Jesus to pour his amazing grace upon you this morning. You are beautiful in his sight. You have such worth in his hand. He's come to bless you, to heal you. Every disease has to bow its knee. Yes, Lord. Come, Lord. We feel you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, you're our Father. All of heaven touching our earth today. I break off yokes of despondency, depression, and discouragement. And heaven touches earth today. Come, Lord. Keep touching your children, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All of heaven's touching you this morning. Thank you, Father. You are the one that fuels us. You are the one that fills us. You are the one that lifts up Jesus in us. You are the one that adds to us and does not destroy us. Your plan was never to destroy us. Hell was not created for mankind. And we thank you for eternal life. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for amazing grace. We thank you for the sweet sound of, of worship. We thank you for fellowship. We thank you that you are a strong and mighty tower. We thank you that we can run into you and be safe. We thank you that only your opinion matters. We thank you that you see us covered with the blood of Jesus. Spirit break out this morning. Break our walls down, Lord, and bring us to that permanent 
a place of amazing grace and fellowship this morning. Amen and amen. Thank you for fellowship with him together and for breaking bread together this morning. I want you to know that the love of Jesus has been shared abroad in our hearts this morning. It has overflowed, bypassed the mind, and it has touched us deeply in the spirit. Keep worshipping him today as we've entered in to that day of rest when we rest from our own labors so yesterday was one of those marathon painting days and as we broke bread this morning let me show you this painting this painting of poppies reminds us of life death and resurrection Many times you see poppies in the open field and you're reminded of even soldiers that lost their lives in the war. And there was crosses upon crosses upon crosses, in, even in mass graves. And when the first rains came and they looked at that place of remembrance, the whole field of remembrance for those that had fallen during that time was covered in poppies. And so next time you see a poppy, think about having died to yourself. You've been made alive in Christ Jesus and that his blood and his life and his life and his light call out on your behalf thank you father thank you for your amazing grace thank you for the blood of jesus how sweet the sound that saved us in jesus name have an awesome day have a day of letting god love on you you are not who people say you are you are not who people say you are. You are only who God says you are. Thank you, Beverly, and everybody else. I also want to say to you that straight after painting that, which, by the way, was painted with hands, except for the little seed, the little seed carriers, the rest was with hands and it's a lovely medium it's so freeing and maybe tomorrow i'm going to speak about creativity that each of us is born with creativity in our dna hi linda harrower it is so wonderful to see that you've come online you are a blessing to so many, so many. I'm trying to finish. <laughs> and yet, I'm still hanging on to all of you. <laughs> I bless you, Helga. Enjoy your weekend at this ministry uh, weekend you're having. Bless you, Tammy. Mirinda Brits. Thank you, Mirinda. It is a very prophetic painting. Bless you, Magali. Bless you, Lou. I love you. You are beautiful, Lou. Bless you, Nolene. Thank you, Tracy. Tracy, I want to thank you for your consistent encouragement. Thank you. Inner G. 
good for you. You watch it later. Val, lovely to see you. Thank you, Christine. Love you too. Thank you, Charles uh, Peterson. All the way from Norway. Stay afresh in the King of Kings. That is awesome. Thank you. And Charles sends love to all of us. All the way from Norway. Isn't that special? And Carwin from Abergavenny in the UK. And Miguel and Bruce from Dublin. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think I must love and leave you all. <sighs> Have an awesome day. We love you, Jesus, and we love one another. And our, our hearts are filled. Thank you, Avril. As we've broken bread together this morning, we thank you. That is so true. Marinda says, Deborah will never be the same. It will always remind me of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from nation to nation. Oh, Juliana. There have been days that my, my strength wants to fail. And then I'm so encouraged by you. Stephen Chris Thomas from Chester in the UK, another couple. I've known them since the very first trips, 1996, that we started ministering in the UK and they came to the conferences. That's a lot of years ago and just so encouraging. Tammy says, do we have to end? We have had an amazing week. The messages that Father has unpacked for us this week has been amazing. It's a pleasure, Sharon. She says, thank you for fellowship. I've known Sharon since the age we were both 10 years of age. Isn't, isn't friendship precious? I've only newly met Cheryl and Heather and many of you, but you're so beautiful and so precious. Thank you, Mirinda. Thank you. Okay. Paul said on the beach, as he said goodbye, that they had to tear themselves apart. They did not want to say goodbye. <laughs> Love you too, Craig. Love you too. I told you, I will always be that mom standing in the corner watching over you and Juliana that the love of God will saturate you, build you up, and not break you down. Oh, Marinda, you know, I didn't even know that you don't actually live in Cape Town. Yeah. Very encouraged, uh, Beverly, it's the truth. When we go through struggles, we're quickly able to call on one another to pray. And when things are great, we're also able um, to celebrate with one another. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.